Cryptocurrency takes up a lot of energy. Researchers at Cambridge estimate that the Bitcoin network alone consumes about 130 terawatt hours of electricity every year. That's about half of 1% of all the electricity consumed in the world, which is a lot. <laughs> that means the world only does 200 Bitcoin sized things every year. But why does it use so much energy? And is there a better way? Bitcoin was invented as a way of enabling direct exchange between people without any governments or banks. That is, it's decentralized. In other words, it and other cryptocurrencies run on financial ledgers that are stored on tens of thousands of computers all around the world. These ledgers are basically lists of who sent what to whom and how many coins everyone has afterwards. Now, say this block represents a bunch of recent transactions. Remember, it's not just stored in one place, it's stored in a bunch of places on a bunch of different computers, as is the rest of the data, the records of all the transactions that anyone has ever sent. So you, you, you string all those data together and you have the full database, a chain of data blocks or a blockchain. If they're gonna be functional and secure though, because there are so many of them, Blockchains need to have what's called network consensus, a shared view of what's what. Now, there are a couple ways to design the process of proposing transactions to add to the permanent record. The most common is called proof of work, and this is where all the energy use comes in. It uses a lot of electricity because these blocks need to be assembled, right? In the case of proof of work, Computer operators known as miners race one another to confirm the legitimacy of a handful of recent Bitcoin transactions, group these transactions together into a block, and then solve a kind of cryptographic puzzle that allows them to show that block to the rest of the network. And if the majority of the network agrees that the block looks legit, it gets added to the blockchain and the winning miner is rewarded with a handful of Bitcoin. As for the losers, their calculations are now worthless. And just think, there are an estimated 1 million miners out there. That's a lot of losers and a lot of work being done in vain. Even without the redundancy, each miner uses a bunch of electricity to try to solve that cryptographic puzzle and propose the chain's next block. And that's by design. The thinking goes, if you have to expend and pay for a bunch of energy to add transactions to the record, you're a lot less likely to add fraudulent transactions to that record. They'll just get rejected by the network anyway. But surely there's a more efficient way to assemble blockchains. Instead of a competition-based model, an algorithm could select one computer to do the job each time. That step would virtually eliminate a blockchain network's electricity consumption. We're talking cutting out like 99.95% of electricity use. Under these protocols, called proof of stake, the people who mine crypto are now validators, and they lock up some of their coins with the promise that they'll be charged a penalty if they skip out on their job or introduce fraud into the system. This method isn't as common. Some blockchain networks, like Ethereum, are in the process of transitioning. But Bitcoin developers have no intention of switching to it. And some people argue that all that energy use is actually a good thing. The argument looks something like this. Electricity consumption isn't the same as carbon emissions. If we generate electricity from renewable sources, it shouldn't matter how the Bitcoin network is powered. And current estimates suggest that between 40 and 70% of the network already runs on renewable energy. But here's the real leap of faith. Some crypto boosters argue that cryptocurrencies are actually accelerating the transition to renewables. The problem with wind and solar these days isn't the price. In most places, they're already cheaper. The problem is their storage and distribution. But you can put Bitcoin mining rigs anywhere you want in the world, and you can turn them on and off anytime you want. If power companies could sell excess electricity to crypto miners, mines could basically be backup generators for the grid. So seen from this angle, something like Bitcoin almost acts like a clean energy subsidy. But not everyone's convinced. There was a recent report of an old coal plant in upstate New York that was brought back online 
converted to natural gas for the sole purpose of Bitcoin mining. We've also seen recent reports of oil drillers burning excess natural gas for the sole purpose of mining crypto. And in these cases, Bitcoin is acting as a fossil fuel subsidy. So what is Bitcoin actually incentivizing? What's clear is that Bitcoin increases the demand for electricity. At this moment in time, the systems are not big enough to actually move the needle on climate, which isn't to suggest that they won't be in the future. But I think what that implies is the time to make some really serious decisions is today. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, there are a lot of great resources out there and uh, we couldn't fit all of them in this video, but we did put a few in the description. Um, tell us what we missed in the comments, or if you've got any other questions, uh, we'd be pleased to take a look.